Nanette Thomas was a hardworking mother living and working in Montgomery, Alabama. At 51 years old, she had a job at Glovis America, a company that prepares cars for shipment, specifically for Hyundai. Nanette had obtained this job through Malone Staffing and was a frontline team leader supervisor. Now, many people say they don't believe in coincidences, but a strange occurrence would be noted in Nanette's case. A fellow employee at Glovis, in fact, an employee that Nanette directly supervised, would be reported missing on April 2, 2016. Nanette would be reported missing less than a week later. In fact, her date of disappearance would be between April 6th and April 9th, depending on the source. Since she lived alone, it would take a few days for Nanette to be reported missing. Nanette has not been seen or heard from in five years. Where is Nanette Thomas? <laughs> Welcome back to the Where Are They podcast. The goal of our show is to spread awareness of unsolved missing persons cases. So thank you so much for listening to these stories and sharing them whenever you can. Before we dive into the strange disappearance of Nanette Thomas, I have a few show announcements. First, thank you for all of the case suggestions. Keep them coming. If you have one you'd like to send over to me, you can always email me at canwefindthem at gmail.com. So now let's talk about why we are all here. Nanette Yvette Thomas. This case received almost no media coverage, so finding information and people to question about her was very difficult, even being able to verify a couple of the little sources we did find. But these are the cases that pull at me the most, the ones that need to be shared and talked about more than anything, just to get other people talking. Nanette Yvette Thomas was living in Montgomery, Alabama in 2016 at the East Dale Apartments. This apartment complex was located off of Atlanta Highway, and looking at the map seems very close to Highway 231. Nanette is described as a black woman about 5 foot 6 and weighing 220 pounds. Nanette worked at Glovis America, a job she obtained through Malone Staffing. She was a hard worker and served as a frontline supervisor. Glovis America prepared Hyundai cars for shipping. This Glovis location in Montgomery was located about 11 miles from the Eastdale Apartments where Nanette lived. This would be about a 20-minute drive. A spokesperson for both Hyundai and Glovis have come out and said that Nanette was a hard worker. She was never late and never missed a day at work. And that, in fact, was how her disappearance would be discovered. When Nanette hadn't shown up for work in a few days, her employer tracked down a relative, and immediately Nanette's family began calling her, looking for her, but her cell phone was going straight to voicemail. Nanette's sons would later say they knew instantly something was wrong, very wrong. Nanette was always reachable by phone. And with just the fact of her employer calling extended family, really raised some red flags. So the family rushed over to her apartment, but they found no sign of Nanette. In fact, the apartment looked as if she had just walked out and left. They did call the police right away to report her missing. Police would start to investigate 
and they noticed that there was no sign of a struggle at her apartment whatsoever. And on April 9th, 2016, the media does pick up Nanette's story, although just briefly. And I think what sparked even that to happen was the fact that Nanette had a co-worker that had been reported missing just days earlier. Rakeem Samuel was last seen on Saturday, April 2nd, 2016. Rakeem was an employee at Glovis and worked with Nanette. He was just 19 years old when he disappeared. Rakeem was officially reported missing on April 4th, 2016, Investigators learned that he was running errands on that Saturday, and around 1.30 p.m., he was seen leaving Walmart on Eastern Boulevard in Montgomery. He got into a dark Nissan car, which police believed was being driven by a co-worker from Globus, and left the store. Rakeem would not be seen again, at least for a few months. When police investigated, they did confirm he was with a female Glovis co-worker that day. They do not know, or at least have not said they know, who was driving the car that he got into, or even if there were other passengers in the car. It is described only as a four-door Nissan with tinted windows. I'm not sure if the police don't know the driver or just haven't released a name to the public, But yet the interesting part is that Rakeem was with another Glovis employee the day he was last seen. Another connection to Nanette. This Walmart that Rakeem was last seen leaving was just five miles from Nanette's apartment. The search for Rakeem would begin and there would be no clues or evidence leading to Rakeem. A week later, Nanette Thomas would vanish. The search for Nanette would begin also with the same results. Nothing. Nanette's car would be found on April 12th, although, again, the police haven't released much information regarding her car. They did note that it was found on South Eastland Road, but they didn't indicate where on the road or how far from her apartment it was. So no results or no evidence or clues would be uncovered for a few months, that is, until June 30th, 2016. Almost four months of being missing, Rakeem's body is found in Montgomery, Alabama, He was deceased, and police have ruled it a homicide. Investigators have also stated that they believe Rakeem knew his killers, although to date his case remains unsolved. His mom, Erica, raised Rakeem as a single mother and said her son was responsible, caring, and had a bright future. I'd like to play this news clip from WSFA that includes an interview with Rakeem's mother, Erica. It does help shed light on the investigation and what kind of person Rakeem was. The mother of Rickham Samuel is making an urgent plea for the public to come forward with information that could shed light on what happened to her son. WSFA 12 News reporter Rosanna Smith has this story. That smile was so beautiful that he had, so bright. Rakeem Samuel is remembered as caring, respectful, helpful, and funny by those who knew him best. He touched a lot of people's heart. Not a day goes by Erica Davis doesn't miss her son. She says her faith plays a big role in easing the pain of losing a child. I praise God for the strength that he has put in me to be able to still stand. In April of 2016, Davis's son went missing. Months later, Rakeem's body was found in this wooded area behind me along Hopper Street with so many unanswered questions. The family continues to make this plea. I'm clean for help to close my son's case. If you could just come forth with anything would be a great deal of help. Few details have been released in the two years since. Montgomery police continue to handle the case as a death investigation. Just the circumstances of everything, I feel like my child was murdered. This mother says her mission now 
journalists to stay focused on searching for the truth in a quest for justice. Somebody knows something, and I'm not going to stop. Not going to stop. I got too much in me. I'm not going to stop, not going to give up. And the hope is some information will emerge, providing Rakeem's family one thing. Overall peace. Rosanna Smith in Montgomery, WSFA 12 News. If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 215 Stop. And with Crime Stoppers, you don't have to leave your name. Police have stated that they don't believe that the cases of Nanette Thomas and Rakeem Samuel are related, although it is quite the coincidence. Now, Montgomery, Alabama is a populated place, almost 200,000 residents. Alabama as a whole has 204 unsolved missing persons cases as of this recording, one of those still being Nanette Thomas. As a state, Alabama has one of the lowest missing persons cases per capita, which makes it even more surprising to me that Nanette's case hasn't received even more attention than it has. I am glad that Rakeem's case is receiving some attention, although it continues to remain unsolved. If you Google Nanette Thomas missing, however, most of the results on the first page of Google are related to the case of Rakeem Samuel. And I don't want to take away the importance of that. There are likely killers that need caught. But what about Nanette? Where does that leave her? She is still a missing person, and this is still an unsolved case. Nanette's sons and her niece talk to the media as much as they can, it seems, although it hasn't resulted in a lot of coverage. And as someone who does do a lot of research to report on cases, I try to look at it from the standpoint of the media. Why wouldn't this case receive more coverage? And we know there's a lot of factors that play into that, a lot of it being the other news they have to report Or what else might be going on in the world or in the local area at that same time? Our Where Are They podcast typically covers one case a week. A news media outlet covers multiple stories daily. On-air news clips, such as the one you heard regarding Rakeem Samuel, can receive a quick two-minute clip. While I am sure there were some news clips for Nanette when she went missing back in 2016, those clips have not been archived and I could not locate any. Only a couple small news articles all referencing the same facts of the case, the few that we actually do know. So even with so little to go on, I have some questions about this case a lot of which could probably be answered if the police would speak out more publicly with what they know. But again, we just don't know if they are not telling us something or if it is just that they don't know anything. Here are a few questions that I have. Question number one, was Nanette involved in any relationships, dating or otherwise? With the exception of her two sons and a niece, who lovingly refers to Nanette as Aunt Nettie, no one was ever mentioned in connection with Nanette. And a lot of times in unsolved cases, missing persons cases especially, we always want to know if there are people close to them. Statistics show us when a person goes missing, it's likely in connection with someone they know. However, nothing has been said as far as if Nanette had any relationships going on at that time. My second question, what's the story with Nanette's car? The apartment was described as being untouched, meaning investigators don't believe anything bad happened there. But then her car was reported as being found on April 12th. So what does that mean? Was it found in a place where it wouldn't normally be? It was found on South Eastland, but we don't know any more than that. And what state was the car in? Was it locked? Were any of her belongings found inside? 
In fact, when I had first begun researching this case, one of the things I had looked for pretty early on was information about what Nanette drove or if she even drove. They talked about her apartment, searching her apartment, and her relationship with Rakim at work. But nothing was ever talked about if her car had been located. In fact, it was a little blurb piece of information that I did find that mentioned and confirmed her car. So the situation with investigators locating her car leaves me with a lot of questions about that. And question number three, who were Rakim's co-workers that he was with the last day he was seen? I know this question is in relation to Rakim's case in particular, and I know police have said they don't have any evidence to lead them down the path that Nanette and Rakim's cases are related, but I'm not so sure. It seems such a coincidence and I just have some questions about those other coworkers. If they were other coworkers of Rakim's at Glovis, what was their connection to Nanette at Glovis, if anything? So, other than Glovis being the common denominator between Rakim and Nanette, there really isn't anything else to link the two of them. But with such little information, I don't think it can be ruled out completely that these cases are unrelated, especially since they happened a week apart. With all unsolved cases, especially missing persons cases, I don't think anything should be ruled out until there is evidence to prove it. Again, with so little to go on here, it's hard to even come up with some theories But here are a few theories talked about in Nanette's case. Theory number one, Nanette left on her own accord. Now, there is nothing to believe this would have ever happened in Nanette's life. She was a hard worker, a devoted mother and aunt. There was no indication that this was something Nanette might have even been thinking about. But again, I don't think this can be ruled out quite yet. And it is, of course, a more hopeful outcome than the others. And I have read up on missing persons cases that have been solved where the person just wanted to start a new life. Take the case of Jay Holsinger. Jay disappeared from Ohio in 2011, and according to reports, his wife in Rio Grande, Ohio, reported him missing after he left for a job interview and never returned. He also left behind twin sons and a daughter. He would resurface later that year in Missouri, after many people speculated he had met with foul play, as, again, it wasn't believed that he would have left his children and family. Again, not that I believe that has happened to Nanette, but I think we need to keep an open mind. And all avenues need to be investigated. Theory number two, Nanette had memory loss and walked off. Not a high probability of this happening, especially in a high populated area, but again, it's been known to happen. Is she out there and she just doesn't know who she is or where she belongs? The third theory, foul play. The police have mentioned they suspect foul play in this case, but it's just hard to see what the motive would be. Who would harm a hardworking 51-year-old mother? Perhaps a robbery gone bad? It doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to me. What would they take from her? Was she accosted outside of her apartment? And where is her body? Police have leaned towards this theory, and maybe they do have some tidbits of information they're keeping under wraps, which is a very important thing to do in an investigation. But again, without any clues and without Nanette's body itself, we just have no idea. The disappearance of Nanette Thomas is baffling. Someone knows something, and we need someone to come forward and talk. Nanette was last seen wearing a white tank top, a pink pullover shirt, and white capri pants. 
She stands 5 foot 6 inches tall and weighs approximately 220 pounds. Nanette is a black woman with black hair and brown eyes. If you have any information as to the whereabouts of Nanette Thomas, please call the Montgomery Police Department at 334-241-2651 or Alabama Crime Stoppers, whom promises anonymity and offers reward money for any information leading to Nanette Thomas. Crime Stoppers can be reached at one 800 392 STOP or 1 800 392 7867. Again, you don't have to leave your name. You don't have to give any personal information whatsoever. This is a case that we're going to continue to investigate. And if we can learn more details, possibly we will do a follow up episode. Make sure you are following us on Facebook and Instagram as we regularly share news and updates there as well. Remember, if you have anything to share or cases to request, you can always email me at canwefindthem at gmail.com. So again, we have a case here that needs more media attention, needs to get people talking We just need one good tip to solve this case and find Nanette Thomas. Please share Nanette's story any way you can. And thank you so much for listening to Nanette's story. I know there isn't much to go on here, but hopefully we can change that by getting people talking and sharing. Nanette's family needs answers. We will be back again next week with another episode of Where Are They? And until then, stay safe and hug your loved ones.